So now we're ready to move on to the second part of the service sheet, uh, which is fuel system and engine management. A lot of it is checks. We have to balance the throttle bodies. I'll go through that later. Um, and just in case you're wondering why I look a bit hot and sweaty, it's 30 degrees in this garage. I'm sweating like a pig. Uh, it's been a hot day in the UK here and uh, yeah, it's really warm. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the seat and remove the tank and then we need to remove the air box. Start by undoing these two Allen keys here and this is a fuel tank fix in here. So we'll get those uh, loosened off and then we'll tip the tank up. Now, this is really awkward to film on my own but those two Allen keys I showed you, they're 5mm. I've put a towel on the tank just in case I drop the socket or anything like that. So we're going to undo those. Get those out. Like that. Best just to take your time. Don't want to rush it and drop it on the tank and scratch or dent it. Just take it nice and easy. Don't forget the little washer. Like right, that, they're out of the way. I'm just going to slacken off. It's an 8mm socket. That one on the back, we'll just slacken that off for a second. I don't want to take that out. Like that. You can't see that, I know. Just got the toe out of the way now. And then what I've done is I've got myself a bit of wood. Just for a minute. So I'm going to lift the tank up and I'm just going to stick that there like that. And just a quick care point when you're lifting the tank. Due to this metal bracket here, you can see that? It's really easy when you're putting the tank down, you really have to be precise. So you can, my advice would be either put a cloth over here to protect that or what I'm going to do. This is only two 8mm bolts, which I've already undone as you can tell. Um, is just get this bracket out of the way because it's so sharp and it doesn't take anything really to scratch this finish on this frame so just take the bracket off for peace of mind okay so to remove the tank we need to disconnect the two breathers the main fuel line and the two electrical connectors but before we even think about disconnecting that fuel line we need to have a bit of rag on standby and what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the two electrical plugs one of them is for the fuel pump one of them is for the tank sender I can't remember which is which but they've both got to come off anyway so we'll disconnect those there's a little tang you push in and then they just come off hopefully I can get this one from here it is a bit awkward there we go like that just start the bike up the fuels might start up and might run for a couple of seconds and then cut out but at least then you know it's depressurised and then what you've got, I'm trying not to get in the way of the camera, is there is a guard that protects the two little tangs you've got to push in. I'll try and show you this when I get it off. So you just push that down. You can sort of swivel this round on the union, push the tangs in, and then just pull. And that will come off. Get your cloth, just not any spillages. And hopefully that's in shot, so I can show you guys this. So that's in the locked position, that's in the unlocked position, and that's the tang you've got to push in. And there's one the other side. So you push those in together, and that's what allows you to release the union. And then when you refit it, you push it on until it goes click, and then you lock that in position. So I'm just going to wrap that in some cloth. Tuck that down there for a minute. So we've already disconnected our two connectors. And then we just got the two breathe hoses. You need to know where these go. I've just marked one with biro, so I know it's the outer one to this side. And we can pull those off. And now we're ready to uh, to undo the little eight mil bolt. Right. So before I remove the eight mil bolt, and there's actually a sleeve in there as well. Just going to lay the tank down. Obviously, just being careful. Although now we've removed that nasty bracket, I've got to worry about scratching the frame. Obviously, I have already loosened this off. So we'll take that off and you'll notice that's quite a lot of corrosion on the threads there and on the bolt so I'll clean that up before I refit it. You might also find, and this is quite glossy this does, ah, there we go. 
I'd already sort of lubed this up. There we are, pull that sleeve out. Now the tank is loose. So my advice is before you lift your tank off, think where you're going to put it. Don't sort of pick it up and then go, oh, where am I going to put it? It should come off. Don't kind of slide it forward. Here we go, one tank out of the way. So I just thought I'd show you, I've got the tank on the bench, on a towel, with a bit of wood, and it's just, just didn't obviously be careful, you don't want to put it down and break this off. This is your main fuel outlet. So I've just got the block of wood resting just underneath the fixing screws for the fuel pump. And that's nice and secure, it's not going to tip over, and I shall cover it with a towel just to protect it as well. Right, we're ready to take the airbox off now, and I have a camera woman helping me, so hopefully we have some better quality shots today. Say hello, Denise. Hello. Right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to take the ECU off the airbox and disconnect the air temperature sensor and the map sensor. So the ECU fixings are that one there, that one there, and that one there. So we'll get these whipped off. Disconnect the air temperature sensor, and then you can just fold that or back out the way like that. Then we need to take the mat sensor off. Again, all we need to do is undo the bolt that holds it on. The next step is to take off the remaining bolts around the top, which is quite straightforward, they're all easy to see. Right now the top of the airbox lid is ready to lift off and what you'll find is in the top is firstly the air filter will come off with it and this is the immobiliser ECU so we'll take the air filter out. Right there's a little tang we need to undo which is just, you got that? Just there? Yeah. Slide that off the bracket like that and then as always just a latch connector. There we go. And just one other thing to show you guys is that this wiring there is a little cutout that that runs through there. So when you put it back, you need to make sure that that goes through there. Now what we need to do is we need to undo. There's a eight millimeter fix in there, and there's some Allen keys that we need to undo. I'll undo this one first. Four millimeter Allen key to undo those, and then that should lift up. I think there's a couple of breather hoses to undo as well. That's it. Just uh, you just got to tuck the air inlet out, the trunk in the front. All right, just get a pair of pliers. Like that. And there we go. I'll just show you on the service sheet why we've taken the tank and the airbox off. Because uh, there's a lot of stuff that's under there that we need to do. Um, because my bike's only done 6,000 miles in about three years, I can do a 6,000 service. Um, and then anything else as and when it's required. So as we go down, we've got to check and adjust the throttle cables. Check the fuel system for leaks. Clean the throttle bodies then it's on about checking for fault codes using the Triumph diagnostic tool. There are a couple of alternatives, I have bought one and I'll talk about that later. Um, check the secondary exhaust clamps, well I've looked on a parts diagram, the only exhaust clamp I can see is the one that goes to the rear silencer. Um, balance the throttle bodies, you'll need a diagnostic tool to do that, you can't do it with vacuum gauges. Um, and that's about it, but also, if we go into the next section, it says check spark plugs. So, and to get to those, obviously, you need to take that lot off as well. So, I will cover taking the spark plugs out as well. Right, so we're going to take these spark plugs out to inspect them, or if you were going to change them, for argument's sake. Um, so, first of all, what we need to do is, you can see that this bracket is right in the way of the coil pack. So, we need to take that off. It's 8mm. So, we'll just take that off, it's only one bolt, there we go, 
and then what would make it easier, tuck this breather out of the way. Uh, we need to disconnect this, well, it's already disconnected. Lift that up out of the way, this wire and loom, just to give you access to get the coil out. And on the right hand side, there's an ABS sensor. So we just unclip that to give us a bit of free play. Uh, we need to disconnect the multi plugs off the pencil coils. So just push the tang in, pull them off. Like that. Now you might well find that these pencil coils will be really tight. So what you'll need to do is work them, twist them side to side like that and you still might find even doing that that they're really tight so to give you a little tip get yourself a cable tie pop it underneath the pencil coil, you still need to be quite careful because theoretically you could still do some damage and pull like that I'll show you that again underneath there and pull and twist that like that and pull and then we can remove our pencil coils and this is why we've had to remove that wire and loom so you can pull the pencil coil out. The middle one's easy, now we've got that bracket out of the way and this one is a little fiddly because you've got the brake hoses as well in the way but it will I hope, come out, there you go. So that's our pencil coils, lay them to one side, somewhere safe. Now we're ready to take the plugs out. Now this is quite fiddly so we're going to go down it's actually, I'll just show you, it is a 10mm plug socket. They're quite a way down in the engine. I'm not even going to attempt to try and film that. And hopefully they won't be too tight. There we go. And it should be down there somewhere. Probably need a magnet or something to get that out. We'll get that out in a minute. Uh, just show you this one, there is a bit of a knack to it because of the frame you can't get an uh, extension in there so we're going to lift that up pop that in like that, there you go and then put our other extension on here's a bit of a faff you just got to take your time Take the extension off, hopefully. Unfortunately the rubber keeper in my spark plug socket doesn't work very well. So I'll have to get them out with a magnet in a moment. Luckily they're not too tight. going to grab a magnet, there we go, and hopefully, there we go. Right, so now we've got the spark plugs out, we can just check the condition, um, just make sure the electrode isn't too burnt, obviously you can't gap them because they're double electrode, and to be honest with you, mine look pretty healthy, so I will be uh, just... Uh, probably cleaning those up a little bit and putting those back in. If you really want to, you could uh, change them. Um, I would probably advise just a little bit of copper slip on the threads, just to make sure that the next time they come out quite easy. And obviously when you put them back in, don't need to over tighten them too much. Right, so I've refitted the spark plugs and the pencil coils. Now it's time to clean out the throttle bodies. Um, just one bit of advice, for cleaning the throttle bodies, I wouldn't use blue roll like this. I'd use proper material cloth, if you see what I mean. Because this tends to break off and it might fall down inside the throttle housings. You really don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to wipe these out first to get rid of any sort of bits of crap, whatever. And then what I'd advise you do is just spray some sort of brake cleaner maybe. And just give them a a wipe out like that and then once you've done that then you can think about opening the throttle and just getting down inside just put your finger down the side of the throttle butterflies and just clean away like that and there we go they're nice and clean and that's that job done.